On the build show today, we're going to be talking about vapor barriers. Do I need one? Do I need it on the inside or the outside? We're going to get into some good building science today. And oh, by the way, I'm coming to you from the SEGA headquarters in Switzerland. I've got a great wall muck up behind me. We're going to be talking about a fantastic tour I took. This is a really good episode. Let's get going. Yeah. Build Show has been on the road. We're in Switzerland, and hopefully you saw our other videos. We have visited some incredible job sites over the last couple days to see how they build in Switzerland. Now today we're at the Sega factory. I don't know if you know this company. This is a Swiss company that makes some incredible products. A lot of them go into the passive houses that are being built to some of the highest standards in the world right now. But we're going to be on today's episode getting into some geeky building science. But before I do that, I want to bring on two of their trainers. This is David and Andrew from SEGA. And they're going to be installing not a traditional vapor barrier for us, but a directional vapor control layer. This is a product very special. Only SEGA has it. It's called Myrex. And these guys are going to be installing it while I give you some basic building science. We'll come back to them in a minute while they're installing the background. Now first, before we get into this, let me start at the basics, because not everybody watching this knows exactly what we're talking about. What are the four things that every house needs to control? There's really four major elements of nature that every house has to control. And of course, the first one is water. If we don't control water, it's all over. If our houses start leaking, we're going to end up having problems in the houses to begin with. So we need to control the bulk water. That's the rain, that's the snow, the ice, all the things that are coming down from the sky. Number two, just below that, is air. We need to control air movement. You know, when I was a kid, my dad used to always say, what do you think, we live in a barn? Close the door, son, I'm paying for that heating. Now, we're here in Switzerland. It's 10 degrees outside right now. If we left our doors open and don't control that air, we're going to use a lot of heating, and we're going to use a lot of cooling in the summertime if we don't control the air. Number three, we need to control vapor. And that's probably why you may have tuned into this episode, because we're talking about vapor barriers. Vapor, V-A-P-O-R. Now vapor, this is something we've heard about a lot, right? I've been a builder for 25 years when I started in construction. The only thing we use for a vapor barrier, and I was building in the, uh, in the Northeast, is we use plastic, we use visqueen. We'd put it up on the walls right before the drywall guys came, and that would control vapor flow into our walls. Now in a cold climate, we need one of those, and I'm going to get into that in a minute, but that's the third thing. We have one more thing that our houses need to control, that's thermal. This is insulation, this is heat flow, right? If we don't heat our houses in the wintertime, they're going to be awfully cold, and if we don't have any insulation in the walls, we're going to have huge bills. This, this order of importance, though, we need to respect, right? Water really is more important than air. If we don't control water, it doesn't matter if we've got any air. But air is really more important to control in some respects than vapor. And if we don't control these three, it doesn't really matter how much insulation or, or how less insulation we have. OK, now let's look at a building envelope. We talk about this as building scientists all the time. The envelope, the walls of the house, the roof of the house. Here's a slab on grade house. Here's your walls transitioning white to a roof. And we've got insulation in the walls, right, controlling the thermal. And we talked about water, the most important thing a house has to control. When that water comes down from the sky, it needs to run off. But what about air control on a house? You know, in the wintertime, if our windows and doors are leaking, and if we have some leakage around penetrations like our, our um, chimneys in our houses, with the stack effect, meaning with that heat rising, we're going to get a lot of air movement through our houses, and that can not only be drafty and uncomfortable, that can cost us a lot of money on our energy bills. And when that heat leaves the top here, what's going to replace it? Cold air in the wintertime coming in through those air leaks like between the slab and the framing. That's going to bring that cold air in, and it's going to drive up our energy bills, and it's going to also drive a lot of discomfort. Now, when that air leaks through the house, Think about this penetration here that may be leaking a little bit of air. Inside in the wintertime, it's going to be hot. It may be a little bit humid in there too because we're cooking, we're bathing, we're cleaning. We've got all this moisture in our houses. As that air leaks through and it ends up leaking all the way to the outside, what do you think it might find? It might find a cold condensing surface which could lead to moisture depositing inside our walls. And what happens when moisture deposits in a wood framed house? That can lead to mold. 
on the converse for that, if water comes in from the outside and we have a roof leak, let's say, in our envelope, whether that's from a roof or a window, same thing can happen. Mold can happen in our houses. Okay, next. Airflow in diffusion. Getting back to this vapor barrier thing, which is why you're watching this video. Where do we need the vapor barrier? How much control do we need to make over it? Now, there's two ways that vapor can move through our walls, right? Diffusion is one method. We hear about this all the time. What's the perm rating of your house wrap? Or how much water can actually move through a material through diffusion? Now, I stole this from Joe Stebrick at Building Science Corporation. This is one of his um, diagrams that I'm basically using here. But let's say this is a four by eight sheet of drywall. In, four, in a four by eight sheet, over the course of one winter, how much water can diffuse through there, which means it actually goes through the cells and, and the, um, the material itself. About a third of a quart. How much is a third a quart? Mm, it's about that much right there. That's about how much water over the entire heating season might diffuse through the wall. So do we need a vapor barrier? Yeah, we probably do. We want to stop that movement. But on the other hand, what about air moving through that same thing. What if that same four by eight sheet of drywall, let me use my little cool Sega knife here, what if it had a little one inch by one inch square hole there, if I can make it square without cutting myself. What if we had a little hole in that drywall? Do we have holes in our walls? Of course we do. We have wire penetrations, we have electrical fixtures, we have all kinds of things penetrating our drywall in our houses, on American houses. Four by eight sheet, one inch square hole. How much water do you think is going to go through there compared to the diffusion? Devin, how much water do you think it is? It's this much right here. Instead of a third of a quart, it's actually 30. You imagine these 30 water bottles dumping into your wall over the course of a heating season? That's a big deal. Thanks, brother. So we need to make sure that we don't have air movement. And in fact, air movement is in some respects more important than the vapor barrier. Remember when we talked about diffusion, which is your vapor barrier, we can get a third of a quart. But when we get into air leakage through our walls, we can get a lot of water through our walls. And that accumulates in our framing. And if that gets to the point where it's too much, that's where problems occur. So air leakage is actually a really big deal. And that's why what these guys are doing over here is really interesting. Now they're using a very cool and a very um, high tech membrane for this, but what they're also doing is they're doing all the details right from an air sealing perspective. They're using that vapor barrier on that ceiling there. They're installing it in a method that they've really thought about all the air sealing details and that is what we want to talk about today, is how do we get a really airtight house that also has gotten the vapor correct on the house. Now I'm gonna step off for a second and let these guys finish up. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay guys, I'm here with the guy who brought me all the way overseas here to Switzerland. This is Patrick Hockey. Patrick, thank you so much for bringing me. What an incredible couple days I've had. Now, little introduction. Patrick is actually a former master carpenter. He grew up in Germany and was a carpenter for almost 15 years before he joined Sega. And now he's the top dog on sales. Now, Patrick, tell me what's different about your company. Well, Sega has a vision. We strive for a world of zero energy loss buildings and every zero energy loss buildings needs a high performance envelope. That's and right. This is what Sega is specialized in. So we produce high performance tapes, adhesives, membranes for building envelopes. We develop them unique products with added value for buildings mm -hmm. and builders, of course. We produce the products ourselves on our own machines, self-developed machines with the Toyota production system. Mm. And then once we have produced them, we, we train the installers. We give training and advice in all our different markets and countries and then uh, make it happen because the best product would fail without the proper application. Boy, that's for sure. Therefore, that's really the crucial part of our work. No doubt, and I'll tell you, that's one of the things that I've loved about this visit. Um, these two guys who did this install for us, we didn't spend any time with them, but tell me about those guys and their role in your company. 
Well, Andrew and uh, David, they are two of our trainers that we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, you must imagine that Sega has an overall staff of 500 people mm -hmm. and 260 of them are working in the field in training advice and of course also as sales reps. But wow. they do training, building site trainings, uh, lunch and learns, workshops with all our customers in the world to make sure that they know how to work with the product. That's really cool. And you guys have a very specific manual, which I loved learning about today in that Global Air Tightness Academy that we spent some time on today, learning about how to use the products, how to get a proper air barrier, how to get a proper vapor retarder, how to do all those correctly and use every one of your products. And you guys have really specialized. You have products that would be used in Switzerland and products that would be used in American construction as well. Tell me about your the plant tour that we took today and that kind of how you guys actually build the products that, uh, that we're using out in the field. Well, since we know the demands from the different markets, uh, we, we gather all that information in our uh, R&D department mm -hmm. and then we, we develop the product specific for the demands that we have. And then, of course, with our local people, we can apply uh, the application technique of the products to the specific demands of the market. Yeah. Also respecting the climate that we have in these different regions, for example. Yeah. Now, one of the things that we talked about today in the conference was how your adhesives were different than some other adhesives out there. Tell me about that. Well, the adhesives, that's an, a water-based acrylic mm -hmm. glue, which is aging resistance. That's the most important uh, yeah. property of that yep. product because you would expect that to last for like decades, yep. for generations. Um, and therefore, uh, it needs to be solvent-free, free of raisins, um, uh, or, or VOCs, for yep. example, just also for a healthy climate and for durability of the products. And uh, that's, that's the basis of this uh, top secret glue, of course, that we <laughs> use. Yeah. And, uh, and speaking of glue, we spent some time in the lab today talking about stickiness. Now, this is hard to define, of course. When we, when we as a builder, and we get a sample in on something, you stick it to your hand and you kind of see how sticky it is. But you can actually measure that stickiness and we saw a demonstration, for instance, today uh, of one of your products, MyCoat, where they have an overlap layer on that, where you pull the tape, you put two layers down, and we could actually, you actually lifted a guy up yeah. with that tape. I uh, also saw a photograph of the two owners of the company. This is a still a family-owned company, started in 1966. Tell me about that photograph. You know what you're talking about, right? Well, they, they are on a forklift upside down and, and the forklift carries like a, a, a wood panel uh -huh. and they are sticked with their boots from, from, from the bottom to that panel and, and, and hanging there like upside down. Just with your tapes. Yeah, sure. Very cool. Very cool. Patrick, thank you so much for having me. Super impressive company. You guys have some impressive people, some impressive processes, and I'm excited to see how your vision of a zero energy loss building is going to translate to the rest of the world. I know the people that watch my build show are like-minded. They're interested in building better. They may not have seen all those techniques. And so it's really fun to come here and be able to show people how things are done in Switzerland. Because I think you guys, in some respects, are a little further along in developing those really durable, really energy efficient buildings. But we're coming on strong in, uh, in America and we've got a lot of Canadian viewers as well. So we're not far behind. Thank you so much for having me, Patrick. You're so welcome. I really appreciate it. Okay, guys, we learned a lot about Sega, but let's go back to the original question, which is, where does the vapor barrier go? How much do you need? What do we do about stopping moisture and vapor in our houses? So first off, as you've seen, we're here in Switzerland. This is a cold climate. Very, very similar, though, to a broad swath of North America, right? If you're building in Chicago, if you're building in Boston or Vermont or really anywhere just about in Canada, your climate's pretty darn similar to Switzerland. It's a cold climate. It's mainly a heating dominated climate. You might have air conditioning, but you don't need it a lot. And so you want something to stop vapor from diffusing through your walls and into your framing. You also want to make sure that you're stopping airflow at the inside. And that's why I really like this demo these guys did for us earlier because they've got what we call a vapor barrier, but it's really not a vapor barrier. It's stopping the flow of vapor. And this one happens to have some really cool technology where it's only going one way. I don't want to get into all the salesiness on that, but check out the link in the description below to hear more about that Myrex. It looks like Madrex, but you don't pronounce all the letters, so it's actually Myrex. Anyways, we do need something to stop that vapor from getting into our framing because if 
vapor, or more importantly, air, which is going to carry vapor, gets into our framing, a lot of bad things can happen. So you do need one if you're in a cold climate. Okay guys, hopefully you caught the building science. We got into the basics. I didn't get into every single detail or every single climate, but hopefully you learned something today. Big thanks to my friends at SEGA for bringing us all the way over here. Joey and Jordan joined me. We've toured some amazing job sites. Make sure you check out our other content. And if you're new to the Build Show, this is the first time you've watched it, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. We've also got more from Switzerland. And we're actually heading next week to the Bow Show in Germany. So we've got some really cool stuff happening here in Europe. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Build Show.